Now, the majority of the diseases that we treat with uh, therapeutic plasma exchange are autoimmune in nature. Uh, I don't believe we have the time to discuss what autoimmunity in general is, but uh, it is characterized by autoantibodies, which are antibodies that attack self tissues and then can cause damage to any tissue, to any organ of the human body. Uh, it is characterized in laboratory tests by the presence of anti-nuclear antibodies, anti-phospholipid antibodies, uh, and the presence of pro-inflammatory factors such as fibrinogen, IL-6, TNF-alpha, CRP, and also T-cell abnormalities. T-cells are the, the regulators of, of the immune system. So in our, in our experience, as well as uh, in the published literature, uh, it is remarkable that older people have the same, same uh, laboratory phenotype. They have presence of autoantibodies and presence of pro-inflammatory factors. So why is this important? It is important because we uh, know how to treat autoimmune diseases and we know that plasmapheresis is relatively benign and is very successful in the treatment of many autoimmune diseases. And maybe we can apply the same approach to older individuals and attack aging in some form. Uh, and you know, aging is a, is a very important issue worldwide. And uh, uh, the anti-aging market is set to grow to billions of dollars by 2024. It already is into the billions. So for the pharmaceutical approach to anti-aging is a reductionist approach. Uh, they're, they're looking for a silver bullet uh, to develop miracle drugs that won't take one pill and you become young. Uh, many have experimented with antioxidants. Uh, as you know, GlaxoSmithKline spent millions of dollars for a product that uh, died at early age. And at the moment, there is no FDA-approved senolytic. And uh, it is really uh, irresponsible to believe that a single drug can affect a, a process that is extremely complex, uh, as such, as, such as aging. Uh, <clears throat> One thing that uh, is very important is to realize that there are a variety of changes that happen during aging, and one of them is the change of the proteome. So that there are certain proteins that regulate the the milieu, the, the, the environment where where cells function, and uh, these proteins change over uh, our lifespan. And this is important because because uh, uh, what happens in an early age, as you can see on the left-hand side with the black, uh, with the black ink, uh, in, in most situations, uh, young healthy people uh, living in a, something that we call homeostasis, which is the normal uh, protein balance in, uh, in the, the, the blood and tissues. Now, if there is, a, if there is a, a deviation from that, it can happen from a disease but it can also happen from extreme energy release, such as you know, if you're an NBA player and you play a, a very, not even a dramatic game, but any, any high-end game, uh, you, you stress your body and you get out of the homeostasis. However, in younger people, there is a process called allostasis that brings back uh, the system to homeostatic position. However, when we age, because of the change in the, in the uh, proteome or the different proteins in the, in the plasma, uh, we start to develop, well, older people start to develop diseases. And if there is no intervention at that time, this leads to the development of diseases and ultimately death. However, if we can intervene early in this stage of uh, disrupted homeostasis, we can bring back the body to health. Now, the, as I mentioned, the pathophysiology of aging is, is extremely complex. And there are certain things that we know. There are many more things that we don't know yet. Uh, the main processes that 
that contribute to aging are chronic inflammation, and has the term inflammaging, cellular senescence, and a lot of uh, research has been uh, devoted to, to cellular senescence, uh, and of course, immunosenescence, which is the aging of immunocompetent cells. Now, all three processes uh, lead to the development of age-related diseases. The characteristic point of all of these diseases is chronic inflammation. As you can see here, there are quite a few of them. Uh, many people at old age die of infections. Alzheimer's disease is obviously the most talked about uh, disease of aging, chronic autoimmune diseases, cancer, res poor response to vaccines, cardiovascular disease, stroke, and uh, as of late COVID, as you most likely know, uh, COVID is, is not common in younger people. COVID is uh, common in older individuals and individuals with, with predisposing conditions, which basically means some sort of uh, immunodeficiency. And uh, as you will see in a, in a moment, older people do have immunodeficiency and actually uh, more of a dysregulated immune system, which is characterized by autoimmunity as well as immunodeficiency at the same time. So I was told that you have already been exposed to this wonderful couple who published uh, this seminal article in 2005. So I'm not going to go deeply into, into their discovery, assuming that you know, but I will touch on a few important points so that you can understand how we translated their tremendous discovery into our talk today that you're interested to prolong your life. Uh, they used uh, a model, animal model called parabiosis. So they sutured the skin of two mice, one old, one young. And what they observed is that the young mouse became older and the old mouse became younger. Um, there were a variety of morphologic changes, which means that on autopsy of these animals, they found all kinds of uh, uh, morphologic changes that were uh, a change from old into young. And they also found functional changes in a variety of different, uh, different uh, organs. The, the initial assumption of this study was that there was some uh, magical element or protein or something in the young blood that, in, that caused the old mouse to rejuvenate. So there was a, a, this idea that we can donate blood from young individuals, take the plasma and infuse it in older people. And this has been tried, unfortunately, with a variety of uh, really bad outcomes. And now the FDA really prohibits the use of, of, of this procedure. I hope that you found the video informative. Please do hit the thumbs up button, subscribe to our channel and hit the bell button for any new video release notifications. Thank you so much for your kind support. I wish you all well and we'll speak to you again soon.